liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. Yeah. You ready for this? We're here. We're doing it. Are you excited about your check coming? Check coming? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Didn't the, we, didn't we getting... the government just agree to give you another 1400 to make up for all your losses during the oh. uh, year of pandemic? I didn't realize we were getting Biden bucks. Yeah, <laughs> Biden bucks. You got we're it. Getting, we're getting Biden bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 1400 for a select... F- I spent all of my Trump bucks on a gun. Oh, yeah. Well, that's yeah. probably a good investment. I felt like it was. <laughs> yeah. On the way out, Trump bought me a gun. Yeah. I, super nice of him. I appreciated it. Yeah. That that is definitely worthwhile with a Democrat uh, president coming. And now, I'll, oh yeah, absolutely. I felt like it was a good investment. Mm-hmm. And now that I'm getting more money from Biden, I'll do the same with it. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree. wasn't a, wasn't a bad choice. I um, I don't know what exactly I spent. I think my uh, I think my um, my Trump bucks are being inflated away in savings in an account somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I was committed to not let that happen. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> you're smarter than me. Um, I should have, what I should have done is I should have bought Bitcoin, obviously. <laughs> hey man, that would have been an investment, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, um, I did a little math on this actually. Uh, so the, they signed this bill that they signed that's giving you your, your extra $1,400, yeah. um, is a $1.9 trillion bill. Really? Right. And, uh, so there's about 330 million people living in this country, like including children, I feel like illegals. It's, I feel like that's too many, but <laughs> I, like I mean, <laughs> I haven't figured out a way that to, to combat that yet. But <laughs> well, uh, the pandemic didn't do a bad job. I would it say it was a start, yeah. right? Um, the the lockdowns killed who knows how many people. Countless. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I, I'm sure you could count them if you tried. Uh, I, it'd be tough because you'd have to figure out like if it was actually the lockdown that killed them or mm-hmm. just like. Well, I mean, you can do uh, excess suicides, excess overdoses, excess domestic abuse. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a lot of ways that you could probably you could do that. Yeah. It'd um, be interesting. Excess starvation. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, so yeah, fourteen hundred dollars a a person. Of course, it's not actually going to everybody in the U.S. It's you know, yeah. it's a it's a subset of the working population or the working age population, I guess, if you're making less Tax than I can't paid. remember. I mean, you'd have to, you have to pay your taxes. That's true. Cause I know a lot of people that, I mean, I, I may know a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> that don't pay their taxes that didn't get the, the stimulus checks. I got you. So. Okay. All right. So, uh, taxpayers that in years past have earned less than some certain amount. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, even if you give the fourteen hundred dollars to everybody living in this country, yeah. three hundred and thirty million people, that comes up to just under half a half a billion. Wow! <laughs> so it's like less than a quarter of this bill is actually going to you know to the people who need normal it. Normal Americans. Yeah. And this is you know just to illustrate how corrupt this whole thing is. Yeah. And this is Biden's bill. Remember not. Trump's bill. So yep, we yep. all knew how corrupt Trump was. Oh yeah. I think yeah. we know how corrupt Biden is too, but we try to ignore it more. Yeah. Um, the media tries to ignore it more. Yeah. So I think the total that has been given out, um, per, per person. Yeah. Uh, Cause I, it's like, we got 1200 and then 2000 and, um, so that's 3,200 and then this, this 1400. So that's 4,600 per person. Yeah. Um, if you paid that 4,600 to all 330 million Americans, that still only comes up to about one and a half trillion. It's still less than <laughs> this bill, this one bill, the one bill. Yeah. 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 Not to mention the other two bills, two three bills, bills that, yeah. that made all that happen. Oh, uh, just so. think, I, I tell you, like, so I'm not a big fan. Like, I mean, of course, I like mailbox money as far as like stimulus checks coming, mm-hmm. but the way we're doing it's just crazy. But just think if they had what would have really truly been a stimulus is if they took that whole bill and just parsed it up and gave all of that money directly to the people and just injected all of that money into the system. Yeah, but we're not lobbying enough for that. Well, no, but obviously <laughs> not. But like, you want to talk about having an impact, though. Like, mm-hmm. like that would like these small bills. They're not having any. I mean, these small checks aren't having a real impact on the on 
on working people. Like it's not. Like yeah. I mean, it, you, you don't think forty six hundred is uh, enough money to live off of for a year when you've been put out of work? <laughs> well, obviously it's not. <laughs> no. So okay. well, you yeah. just you, you don't know how to maybe, make your money last. Maybe I'm spending it wrong. Yeah. Like I mean, I don't know. I mean, I already told y'all what I spent mine on. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> clearly, well, I don't. Well, know. you can get more that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is true. Uh, but um, but yeah, if you really wanted to have an impact on the economy, if you gave all of that mm-hmm. money directly to the people. Like that would have an impact on the economy. Yeah. Now, I don't know that it would be a good one. It may just shoot inflation mm-hmm. through the roof. Mm-hmm. But well, oh, it will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but it would have an impact. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it would make people happy at least for a few for a few days. Like. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess this is having an impact. There's a lot of governments that are gonna um, be able to make up for their shortfalls because of this bill. Well, because that's uh, what this is really about. This mm-hmm. is about the mainly democratic states and yeah. counties and stuff like that that but it's republican counties too yeah. that are how, how much that money are, did they shell out to airlines for shutting them down oh yeah i mean i don't know it's, i don't know either but it was a ton yeah. but but it is about saving some of these states and mm-hmm. and county governments and stuff like that that have just for whatever reason i mean they blame it on the corona but a lot of these counties and stuff were going bankrupt anyway yeah um, and a way to bail them out. Mm-hmm. So it's about bailing out local government and business and business. It's about yeah, business, business that's connected. Yeah. 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 Um, absolutely. I mean, uh, let's see, what did we spend on the terror war last year? Oh Lord. I mean, it was at least a trillion. <laughs> oh, it had to be. Yeah. Um, you know, it seems like that money could have been added in. I, I, I can think of better things to do with that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I I can't remember what I can't remember the specific details of this, but there was, uh, you know, some um, socialist communist proposing years ago that they could take the money that they were spending on the military and buy every um, unhoused yeah. <laughs> uh, people inflicted with a, a lack of housing or however we're referring to homeless people these days yeah. um, uh, could buy every one of them. Uh, you know, a reasonable house on the wrong side of town. Um, and it would only cost some many tens of billions of dollars. Yeah. A couple of years worth of the wars we're fighting. maybe. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Oh no, not even close. Like you could have done this several years in a row and not have added up to the cost of the war we were fighting. I mean, (laughs) it was, that was the point is that the amount that we spend on the military was so much more than would be necessary to put every single person in this country in a house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Anyway. And uh, instead we're blowing up people on the other side of the world and yeah. making them not have a house. Yeah. If, if that, <laughs> it, yeah. you know, sometimes we're just blowing it up like yeah, right. in the air and not hitting anything. All right. Um, but we'll, we'll get into more detail on that a little later. <laughs> yeah. uh, there was a story that popped up that I thought was just kind of interesting um, considering uh, the way the um, narratives have been running for the, through the Trump years. Um that I thought was worth mentioning. Are you familiar with Cornell West? Do you know who he is? Vaguely. I've, I've seen him. He's, um, he's talked on PBS a few times. Like I know who he is. He's a guy with the crazy hair. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Guy yeah. with the crazy hair. Yeah. Um, that's how I know him. Well, he's, he's a, uh, well-respected intellectual, um, yeah. you know, internationally. He's, uh, brilliant guy i mean i just agree with him a lot like he's a yeah. radical yeah. progressive and he you know. i was gonna say when i've seen him talk i've usually not really agreed with him but that mm-hmm. doesn't mean he's not intelligent yeah like, no I mean, he's definitely a brilliant guy yeah um and uh and you know if you're gonna have somebody make a bad case for something he's the guy that you i'd rather do have it, the you know. smartest guy in the room do it yeah <laughs> <laughs> right um so he was uh recently denied tenure uh at harvard now he was Um, He was tenured at Yale and then he moved to Harvard before and he was tenured at Harvard before and then he left Harvard because he had some spat with the president of the university. I don't remember what it was about. It was a while back, but he's back at Harvard and he's been there for five years um, and he's had positive reviews for five years. And so he requested tenure and they denied him like outright, like they didn't even have a hearing about it or anything. They were like, no, thank you. Yeah. Um, And uh, so when he was asked why he thought that he was denied tenure, um, from this guy, I would usually expect like the kind of the Chris Rock reaction, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> because I'm a black man. <laughs> but no, it's not what he said. Yeah. Um, and uh, he what he said was that he thought that he was denied tenure because he's been a vocal critic of the Israeli government's treatment of the Palestinians. Oh, really? Yeah. 
That's um, interesting. Just to show you that our uh, our racism against the Palestinians in this country is apparently stronger than our racism <laughs> against black people. Um, At least in this instance. <laughs> yeah. Or our fear of being accused of being anti-Semitic. One of the two. It's hard yeah. to say. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but I just... I just thought that that was interesting considering the yeah. that for the last many years there's been this really strong t- pushed narrative to divide um divide the races. Yeah. And uh and that was not what he didn't it didn't occur to him that that had anything to do with it. Now, it yeah. also could ju- be just as easy that the reason that they denied him tenure is they were like, "Well, you had tenure before and you, you know, <laughs> you left because you got in a fight with the administration and we yeah. don't want to deal with that right. again. <laughs> you yeah, know, right. I mean, that, that could be it. I, I yeah. don't know. Um, but I wouldn't, I would say that it's not out of bounds that he's correct. Yeah. Um, about well, no, I, you're, you're probably right. And I'm not, sub- and, and for him to have made, brought that up as the reasoning is interesting mm-hmm. in itself Yeah, that he didn't just automatically lean on the race car. That's like, no, like the, mm-hmm. these opinions are what I think has brought this. Yeah. On. It's kind of a taboo. Yeah, uh, you know, thing. And, and, and it is a taboo thing. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, there's no question about that. Like, yeah, um, it, you know, somewhat related. The uh, the U.S. is once again bidding for a seat at the U.N. Human Rights Council, which we used to have a seat on the U.N. Human Rights Council, and Trump um, withdrew our representation, the U.S. representation there, uh, because they had maintained censure against Israel um, yeah. for their occupation of the uh, uh, Golan Heights and uh, some of these things that we've now told them that it's okay that they have, <laughs> yeah. uh, but is absolutely against international law. Yeah. Um, they're what they, what they captured during the six day war back in 67. Sounds Somewhere right. in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, it's, you know, part of the UN um, international law is that you aren't allowed to keep uh, conquered land, um, and you're not allowed to settle it, and Which is, so on. By the way, the reason we don't own Iraq. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> part of the reason that we don't yeah. own Iraq. There's there's a few other reasons too. Like, I mean, we went in and overthrew their dictator. Like, I mean, we definitely did that, and like, I mean, we installed by, a different one, and yeah, well, and, and we installed a different one. Yeah, yeah. like, well, I he mean, kicked us out though. Yeah, right, right yeah. after that, he was yeah. like, "Okay, thanks for your help." Bye. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, but the yeah. fact that we didn't make it the 51st state, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's, because that would have been taking land. Yeah. Well, and, and that's what Israel has done to, um, some Syrian territory. And of course, like if you consider the Palestinian territories, um, independent, nobody really does. But yeah. if you were to consider the Palestinian territories independent, same thing. Yeah. Um, besides the fact that there is, um, you know, like a real, division like if you are a jew you have israeli citizenship and if you are not you do not well you, you are a resident yeah <laughs> right. a, a non-citizen resident of israel and that's yeah. uh, the kind of thing that we would really frown on anywhere else in the world yeah. um so anyway the point is that the you know trump withdrew because of unfair treatment to israel by keeping them under censure when we weren't doing that to other countries or when the Human Rights Council wasn't doing that to other countries. Um, but the truth is that Israel is quite openly um, flaunting uh, or ignoring international yeah. law. Yeah. Um, you know, and so there's a, a fair reason for it. Yeah. You might say. <laughs> you might say. Yeah. Um, now, we're going to have to have a uh, Israel-Palestine episode at some point. Uh, cause yeah. there's just too much to go over here and there's a whole lot of myths to bust about yeah. that. Um, but it's not going to be tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that may be a long one. <laughs> yeah. I, I've got, oh man, I've got like a page of single spaced 10 point type notes yeah. uh, about that. And I keep saying, well, we're going to do this, but we just haven't yet. Give me some notice so I can try to at least like read, read up, up a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, yeah. A little bit because... Yeah, you may be educating me as much as the audience. <laughs> That's okay. I don't mind. I like to lecture, you know. Yeah. Um, and then at the same time, uh, just shifting a little bit again, um, Israel is... Okay, so of course Biden wants to get back into the uh, Iran nuclear deal, the JCPOA. Yep. And um, he's, you know... Seems he's, to be proving more difficult than... Well, it's because he's trying to add additional 
requirements. Yeah. Um, in order for us to re-enter the deal that we left voluntarily. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, and the claim is that Iran has been breaking the deal. Yeah. But no, it was the U.S. that broke the deal. We withdrew without reason, essentially, at least according to what according to the the requirements of the deal. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then and, and put sanctions back on them, which was absolutely against the the agreement. But we yeah. weren't a part of it anymore. So yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, but as a result. Uh, Iran started to um, move past some of the limits within the deal, but that's part of the deal also, that if somebody withdraws, if they're placed under sanction again, they're allowed to move past. And they yeah. very openly announced every time they were making changes. Um, so they, they have actually continued to function within the the terms of the agreement. Yeah. Uh, but now in order for us to reenter it, we're trying to tell them that we need to add more stipulations and they're like, no, thank you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, we already worked hard to get to this once and then you walked away. Yeah. And who's to say in another four years, you won't do it again. Exactly. Um, so. now at the same time, uh, Israel is pushing the U S hard to stay out of it. Um, yeah. Israel was opposed to the deal to begin with. Um, I'm trying to think of a way to put this delicately, but there, I don't think that there really is a way. Um, Israel's real fear about um, another Middle East power having nuclear capabilities is that they will no longer be able to act um, with without regard uh, to other nations in the area. Yeah. Um, right now, they don't have to worry about the consequences of their actions because they're the only nuclear armed state in the Middle East. Yeah. Um, and, and their real fear is that if another nation, I think, uh, is nuclear armed, that they can't act, they can't attack <laughs> their surroundings, um, yeah. you know, without considering possible consequences. Yeah. Like right now they can defend themselves better than anybody else. Yeah. And that will no longer be true if they're not, no, they're no longer the nuclear monopoly in the Middle East. Yeah. So that's what I think it's really about. But um, anyway, uh, Israel uh, through, you know, so Benny, Benny Gantz, who's the defense minister of Israel, um, he has threatened to, quote, take action uh, against Iran's nuclear program if the U.S. rejoins the JCPOA. Yeah. Now, we've covered this before. Um, but Iran's nuclear program is entirely civilian and it always has been. Yeah. Um, they did some preliminary inquiries into the possibility of developing nuclear weapons, uh, nearly two decades ago. Yeah. Um, but they discontinued and all the, the intelligence agencies agree. And I don't always put my faith in the intelligence agencies, but it, when it's against their interests yeah. and they say these things, um, then it's probably worth listening to. Um, but all the intelligence agencies agree that they stopped their preliminary inquiries in 2003. And why is that? Yeah. Um, the reason is because we overthrew the reason that they were trying, they were considering nuclear weapons in the first place. When we put down Saddam Hussein, they no longer had the threat on their border yeah. and there was no longer a reason to consider it. Yeah. And the, and the truth is that, um, the, uh, the grand Ayatollah, the, um, uh, Khomeini and then Khomeini, um, have both, uh, had um, edicts against weapons of mass destruction. And yeah. in fact, uh, Khomeini, who made the original one, um, he can, they continue to not seek out weapons of mass destruction, chemical, biological, nuclear, um, while uh, Iraq was using chemical weapons against them yeah. in the Iran-Iraq war in the 80s, um, that we were giving him given Saddam Hussein the materials or yeah. allowing sale that was of the when materials. He was our ally. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. We we pushed him into war against Iran. Yeah. Then we helped him develop a chemical weapons program that he was using against Iran and Kurds in his own country. Yeah. Um and uh during that entire time Iran didn't try to develop weapons of their own to do the same thing because there was this edict yeah. that the Ayatollah put out against weapons of mass destruction. It said it's against the tenets of Islam. Yeah. And, you know, I, I can understand not trusting the um, Iranians, yeah. but, um, you know, part of the agreement. Uh, so they're also a, a, a signatory to the Non-Proliferation Treaty. Yeah. Uh, Israel's not, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They refuse <laughs> to sign 
Probably because they have somewhere between 100 and 300 nuclear warheads, <laughs> undeclared nuclear yeah. warheads, <laughs> and they're not so secret, secret nuclear program. Yeah. Um, but I- Iran was a signatory to the NPT, which already opened up the country to the IAEA, yeah. uh, the, the International Atomic Energy Association Agency. No, International Atomic Energy Agency, yeah. um, to come in and inspect their nuclear sites, and they would already know if any nuclear material was being diverted into a weapons program. Um, and, of course, the JCPOA just added additional safeguards. Yeah. Um, so we can say with, with pretty strong certainty that they are not developing nuclear weapons. Um, of course, under the agreement, they could only enrich to, like I think it was 367 uh, percent um, pure uranium. They don't have the facilities to produce uh, uh, weapons grade plutonium. Um, uranium has to be something like nine. Well, it's ninety plus percent, ninety five percent roughly, I think, yeah. uh, pure to be used as as a bomb, um, and and a warhead. Yeah. And that cat wants back in now. Yeah, I know exactly. he just can't. Oh well. Um, they're a long way from that, and the only thing that they've done to enrich uranium greater is uh, when they diverted material to enrich uranium to 20% for their medical program. Ah, yeah. And that's it. (laughs) There is no weapons program in Iran, but we keep playing this because that's a way to get, you know, people worked up about it. Um, and I I suppose that's it. I I guess I don't have anything else to say about that. It just, the the fact that our our great ally in the Middle East, Israel, as opposed to us entering into another treaty um, with a country that would make the world a safer place, that had yeah. made the world a safer place because it takes away the reason to go to war. Yeah. Um, and uh, but they they don't want that to happen. Yeah. Uh, in their own self interest, and they clearly have a strong influence on foreign policy in the U.S. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, without question. So. Yeah. Um. And then I guess the last thing is kind of to pick up where we left off in the last episode. Um, So we had these uh, capital riots that were blown out of proportion. And you may remember uh, um, Grenier, Grenier, however you say his name, talking about using counterinsurgency tactics in the U.S. against U.S. citizens as a result of this. And um, and you may remember the, the quote from Solzhenitsyn, uh, from Gulag Archipelago about how easy it is to um, draw other people into assumed uh, guilt, guilt by association um, when you start going down this path. And, uh, you know, essentially like the dangers of a big central government, big, yeah. strong central government. Oh, yeah. um, and we keep moving more and more in this direction. And so without trying to be, um, you know, having too dark an outlook, I, I did want to talk about like the possibilities of where this can go oh, and yeah. why we need to step up and say, no, we're, we're not putting up with this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so uh, as, as I understand it, they're um, using every tool at their disposal to identify people that were involved in the Capitol riots. Uh, they have been using cell phone data to identify where people were and, and draw them in that way. Um, you know, banking data. Uh, so banks have been giving up, um, information about their their customers who reside elsewhere but had used or had made purchases in the DC area at that time and that's a scary thing to me to know that that they're I mean it's not like you don't always know like hey you pay for something somewhere else that's being tracked but to, but to know that they'll willingly just hand that information over to the government anytime it's asked for well I mean think is, about it uh, the most of those banks are only still in business after 2008 because of the government handouts yeah I mean they've so been paid off already they're, they're basically owned by the government already mm-hmm. so yeah but it's a, it's a scary thing and the, the same thing with the cell phone tracking and stuff like that too. Um, but it's just, it just shows you the world we're living in nowadays, you yeah. know, of that you're, you're tracked everywhere you go mm-hmm. and, and it's, and it's difficult to stay off that grid. And like I said, I mean, yeah, you can go to a dumb phone that doesn't have all the tracking software and pay everything in cash and, and do all these things. But well, even then it's bouncing off a tower. It's still, yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, they can still identify you if they want. And, um, And, you know, they're using uh, facial recognition software for surveillance uh, video, um, et cetera. And then, like, I wanted to 
particularly I wanted to talk about drones in this case. Okay. Um, now, they weren't using drones, to my knowledge. Yeah. Um, but there has already been, and I'm not sure if they ended up doing it or not, but there's already been plenty of talk about using military drones in the continental United States uh, yeah. to patrol the border, as an example. Yeah. Um, I think that they used uh, drones to track... Uh, um, uh, maybe that was too far back. I was thinking they used drones to try and um, uh, track down the Unabomber. Uh, oh, I don't know. But I can't remember. But it, And it may have been somebody else, but I'm pretty sure that drones have been used to try and track a, a wanted person well, within the United States. There's been talk of... of military drones, like mili- specifically. Yeah. yeah. Well, as as like the military drones go, grow older, I've heard talk of using them like in cities, kind of mm-hmm. like the police use the um, helicopters and stuff like that. Yeah. Like the same type thing of just kind of like, like state surveillance, you mm-hmm. know, and um, and I hadn't, it's not something you, that they talk about a lot, but there's been, there's been mention of it before. Um, and that's now, now you're really talking into, okay, like what kind of place do we want to mm-hmm. really live in here? Where like you can be sitting in your backyard and have not even see drones flying over yeah. here. Just, yeah. And we're getting into an Orwell style, giant, scary state kind yeah, of thing. Exactly. I, I mean, I do think that the, um, that the, uh, um, Aldous Huxley style big powerful state is is scarier yeah. because it's more hands off and like you know more insidious. But yeah. um, I you know the Orwell style um, giant state seems to be more in the direction that we're moving. Yeah, and uh, and so I, I wanted I've been reading Scott Horton's book new book enough already. Yeah. Uh, I'm like halfway through it at this point. Um, but it was when I was reading uh, about Pakistan last night. Yeah. Um, that I started really thinking about this, like how how terrifying this can be. Yeah. Um, because they were talking about, you know, Obama stepping up the drone war in Pakistan um, after he took office. And they ended up, um, it like changed the way of life of people in Pakistan. Yeah. Um, that they, you know, they were counting on cloudy, rainy days uh, because sunny days was dangerous to go outside yeah. um, because the drones were flying. Yeah. Um, that you hear them all the time, but you can't always but see you them. You usually see them, yeah. And uh, and that you know, literally, uh, bombs would drop out of the sky and yeah. kill seemingly random people. Yeah. Um. And uh, they well, stopped. And they had a very close knit culture, but it, it spread out because of this, because you didn't want to move around in groups of more than two or three, yeah. um, because you were likely to eat a eat a missile, a rocket, or a bomb. Because because maybe one, if if you're in a group of four, there's like. Three times the chance that somebody in the group is like on some list, yeah. whether they rightfully so or not. Like, yeah. You know. Or if you just see a group of four or five military aged males, which is, you know, 14 what they were targeting, to 60 yeah. or whatever, yeah. um, then you just to be safe. Yeah. You know, you might. Uh, so they stopped doing school. Um, you know, there was like all these things that quit and they were they were terrified. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine. I mean, I can, I can understand that, that type of scenario, you know? And, um, and the way they use these things and, okay. So, well, let me talk about a couple of the methods yeah. <laughs> um, that they used. And, and we've talked about this stuff before, but like, you know, one of the things is link analysis. Yeah. So you talk about using cell phone data, um, you know, link analysis is essentially saying, we know this person's a bad guy. This person contacted that person, so they must also be a bad guy. And then these two people also contacted this other person, so they must be bad guys too. All these people are now linked, yeah. and so we consider them all to be guilty. Yeah. Because um, we know one of them is guilty. And actually, just like in the the Solzhenitsyn bit, that first guy might not be guilty either. Yeah, you, you <laughs> yeah. don't actually know. Yeah. Like. <laughs> but, um, but then, I mean, it's good enough for them to be a target now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is the is actually like the more frightening part is uh, signature strikes yeah. um, that we talked about before. Now signature strikes sounds like it's a very formal process, you know. That, oh, okay, well we know exactly who this guy is, but that's not true at all. <laughs> um, what they're doing there is that they're using data, generally again, you know, cell phone data, um, and somebody's movements uh, match a pattern that an insurgent might do. So, yeah. um, I, and I think the example that I gave when we talked about it on this podcast before, and I'll try and reproduce it as best I can, um, is that say you're on your way to work. Yeah. So you get up, you leave your house, you're on your way to work. 
Um, and then uh, you, you, your cell phone's not in your pocket. And you're like, oh, damn, I dropped my cell phone or something. So you pull over to the side of the road and you start hunting under the seat or whatever. And you can't find your cell phone. So you think, well, I must have left it back at home. So you turn around next opportunity and you head back home. And then on the way home, it buzzes and it was in the seat next to you. And you're like, oh, geez, there's my cell phone. So you stop and you turn around again and you start heading back to work. Hmm. Now, somebody looking at it at the other end that doesn't see what you're doing says, well, this matches the pattern of somebody who's, uh, who's trying to lose a tail. Who's yeah. trying to, um, you know, a counter surveillance tactic. Yeah. All right. So uh, why would somebody be using counter surveillance tactics? They must be a bad guy. Better yeah. drop a bomb. Yeah. Um, and so this and, is the kind of, this is the way, and they have no idea who you are. Yeah. And that was the case with these two. Signature Strikes makes it sound like they know who they're bombing, but they're not. Yeah. They're just using patterns of behavior to, that they say would match the behavior of an insurgent. Or a terrorist, and they're or, dropping bombs on that. In person. reality, it's just some guy that got lost. Yeah, because that would be me. Yeah. Like I get lost anywhere. I got lost on the way here a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've passed by that Dollar General before. Like <laughs> an old friend of mine used to uh, say, like that he had a terrible sense of direction. He said, uh, "He said I have a sense of direction of a yak. I have no qualms about stopping at every little gas station along the way to somewhere. <laughs> so I want second opinions on directions, yeah. man. I can't find my way to anything. Oh, I'm the same way, man." <laughs> get lost anywhere man my car's got gps i still get lost i didn't know yaks had such a bad sense of direction but i you know um but uh, you know another thing is okay so somebody goes and and they purchase a whole bunch of fertilizer yeah okay well you know people bur- purchase a whole bunch of fertilizer when they're trying to make a bomb right yeah but they also purchase a whole bunch of fertilizer if they own a farm yeah yeah uh, you know, right. so um and this sounds absurd but this is the kind of things that the, this is the kind of things that were happening in Afghanistan and Pakistan yeah um these are we, methods we've, that the US uh, intelligence agencies have used to target people yeah well and it's our government has already used this in a foreign country somewhere like these exact tactics yeah and they're not being very bashful about at this point mm-hmm. using those same tactics here yeah. to fight this new enemy yeah. that we have in the in basically the Trump supporters. I yeah. mean, if you really want to be just honest and about more it, more or less the right half of the country and yeah. the far left yeah. tenth or something. Yeah. Um, um, anybody that's outside the mainstream, and if you think that they won't use this on an American citizen, let me remind you of Anwar Al Awlaki. Yeah. Um, who they dropped a bomb on in 2011, or I think it was 2011. I think it was, yeah, something like that. Um, now, Anwar al-Awlaki, he's not a good guy. I mean, yeah. he was, you know, he was inciting violence against America. Of course, he was doing it because he was, you know, he was radicalized. He's an American citizen, um, a Muslim cleric that was here, and he became radicalized by the terror war. Yeah. Um, and he ended up doing a lot of speeches and putting them up on YouTube. And he inspired a lot of people to come out and fight against the American invaders yeah. in the Middle East, which is really what we are. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, but he is still an American citizen yeah. and entitled to uh, yeah. all the protections that the Constitution offers, including a fair trial. Yeah. Um, and including not having things taken from him without due process. Yeah. But he had his life taken from him without due process because we identified him in Yemen and we dropped a bomb on him. Yeah, yeah. He was assassinated. He's an American citizen assassinated by the U.S. government, by Obama's government, the yeah. great progressive Obama, yeah. assassinated by Obama's government without trial, yeah. without due process. Yeah. So if you think that they won't do this against American citizens, you're just wrong. They've already done it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. think about, uh, you know, all the history that we know of what has been unleashed on American citizens in the past anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, I recommend everybody go to Netflix and watch the Wormwood documentary. Okay. Um, the Wormwood documentary is about the death of Frank Olson. Um, now, this guy was a... Uh, a scientist who was working, he's a chemist, I believe. Um, he was working at Fort Detrick. And of course, Fort Detrick is where all the chemical and biological weapons are researched in the U S military. And yeah, he really wants in. Yeah. Should I let him back in? Nah. We'll give him another chance. Nah. No. Okay. It, he, he had his chance. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he, um, he started to question some of the things that were being done, um, he got the idea that possibly the U S was using, uh, biological weapons in, um, Korea in the Korean war. Yeah. And, uh, he, um, 
I guess he started to question what he was doing a little bit more. Yeah. And um, he was a dissident and uh, maybe a threat to unleash or, you know, release some information to leak some information that the U S public wasn't supposed to know about that the U S government was doing. Yeah. Um, and he, he fell from a 13th floor window in New York, um, with another, uh, with a CIA guy in the room with him. Huh. Um, and you know, that guy said, well, he just woke up and the guy went out the window, you know, kind of thing. But they, the Wormwood documentary is about the evidence that they've uncovered that would suggest that the CIA killed him. Yeah. Threw him out the window. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but the, <laughs> the point of this is that, you know, um, Sidney Gottlieb, I don't know if you're familiar with him. I actually have no. a book coming about him. I'm, I, it's supposed to arrive Sunday, I think, um, called uh, Poisoner in Chief. But he was, um, he was a frightening kind of scientist uh, that was researching mind control in the CIA. He was part of the MK Ultra product project and and so forth. And so was uh, Frank Olson. That was the original story. Is that he yeah. was. Um, he was administered LSD and he got out of control and he, he jumped out the window. Yeah. That was the story. Um, but, uh, anyway, like the MK ultra project, if you start looking into it, you'd see that they were, um, giving American citizens high doses of experimental drugs without their knowledge and without their consent. And they were doing it in prisons and so forth too. Yeah. I mean, like, to think your government won't do some crazy stuff is just absurd. Yeah. I mean, you look at what we did to the Japanese during World War II. Yeah. In this country. Yeah. Like the the people who were Japanese, you mm-hmm. know, of descent. Like yeah. Like locked in concentration camps. Like we did that. Yeah. Well, and what Woodrow Wilson did to um, to uh, media people, that journalists that weren't on board. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, there's been plenty of examples. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, to paraphrase uh, Chuck Palahniuk, um, from Fight Club, uh, you have to be prepared to accept the possibility that your government doesn't like you. Yeah. They may actually hate you. Yeah. And yeah. They, there's definitely some disdain for you. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. without question. So um, anyway, the, the point being, like, if you think about these tactics being unleashed on American citizens, um, that, you know, that certainly us putting this kind of information out on this podcast. Well, and it makes you even wonder... Like, so you were talking about, um, like radicalization. Yeah. Like, throw some camo knitting over the top of my house. <laughs> no joke, man. You might need to. <laughs> we can, o- hey, there may be come a time we can only have this podcast on rainy days. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know? Luckily, we get a lot of those down here. Yeah, we do. But like I say, I may not be able to drive here in the yeah. rain. After- What's after dark, too? I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can the drones not see you at night? They, they probably have some like FLIR stuff you know the forward looking infrared they probably yeah, yeah. I don't know. so rainy days it is man yeah, it's not cloudy so. i gotta stay in the house i can get drone bombed on the way to meet with mike <laughs> yeah no so, that would be no good but but it's but it makes you wonder kind of like you were talking about be people being radicalized like mm-hmm. that because that even can start becoming a loose definition mm-hmm. i mean i'm there's i've been called radical plenty of times oh yeah me like too. all i gotta do is start talking about politics mm-hmm. and, and the radical gets thrown out pretty quick yeah <laughs> like, oh i have to add this kicker about the frank olson thing yeah i had to look this up afterwards i because i was like no way that can't be true yeah. um but uh so they brought a, a a lawsuit against the CIA for murdering um, Frank Olson, yeah. um, and the the federal judge threw out the lawsuit. Um, but in his decision, he said that he was convinced by the evidence that Olson had been murdered by the CIA. Yeah. And so you say, well, why why then did he throw out the suit? Um, mm-hmm. Because you can only you can only sue government agency um, under the Federal Tort Claims Act. And it is worded in such a way that you can only sue the federal go- or the government entities um, for negligence. So if they had killed Frank Olson accidentally, that would be then negligent. You, then you could have a lawsuit. But if they kill him on purpose, then they, you can't sue the government for that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Well, and you would think that at that point, well, I, but you're you're caught kind of in that middle section there, <laughs> yeah. like yeah, because he hasn't been convicted of murder. So yeah. Strange. Yeah. I I was like, no, that can't be true. But then I looked it up and it seems to be wow. True. <laughs> Interesting. Um 
So, I mean, it is a frightening world out there when we're, when we're moving more and more in this direction. And, you know, part of the problem is the, again, back to the silencing the dissent. Yeah. Um, and so I, I've actually, I've got another uh, quote from Solzhenitsyn for you here. All right. Um, he said, uh, the prolonged absence of any free exchange of information within a country opens up a gulf of incomprehension between whole groups of the population, between millions and millions. Yeah. You start looking at that and you look at what we're dealing with right mm-hmm. now. I mean, it, you already have groups that just intentionally don't want to speak to one another. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, you can tell pretty quick, like, so me and you are kind of in, immune to this in many mm-hmm. ways because we're in the middle anyway, not mm-hmm. really the middle, but yeah. we're so far removed from what the standard person believes either one side or the other. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, People on the left just don't want to talk to people on the right and pretty much vice versa. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's a voluntary just like not exchanging of ideas. Yeah. Well, and, I, you know, I had a relationship in with one implication that um, that the polit- we politically didn't match up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she said to me, but I, you know, I get the impression that you don't, you don't share your politics with a lot of people. And uh, do you remember what you said to me when I, when I told you that? Yeah. I have the same politics as everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you do what you want to and I'll do what I want to. Like that's my politics. Yeah. Like I love that answer. I was like, oh man, I got to remember that. So yeah, yeah you know, no, I don't have the, I have the same politics with everybody. You do your thing as long as it doesn't, you know, as you don't impose it on me. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> that's yeah. a great got, answer. Got to start using that more. I think I know especially us as libertarians like that's something that should be thrown out there regularly yeah you know I mean because my response was like yeah the best we've done in a national election was like three percent yeah no I have the same politics as everybody (laughs) because everybody believes in freedom in some respect at least they claim to yeah you yeah. Know. Well, and the, this is, uh, you know, another thing that we should probably stress is the great majority of interactions that you have on a daily basis are libertarian interactions. Yeah. That th- all they are is, um, is interactions, relationships that are consensual and, um, and voluntary and voluntary. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. And you're absolutely right. Cause I know people that don't talk to other people all the time voluntarily. I'm yeah. not going over there and talking to him. He's yeah. a, jerk <laughs> you know yeah and that's fine like that's that's mm-hmm. absolutely okay and know? i i do think that the uh the libertarian um approach is a uh is a real um uh let's see what would be i'm trying to think of a medical term and i, I can't think of it um a cure i guess ah, yes. uh, there was something there was a better word that i was trying to come up with but i couldn't come up with it it's anyway, pretty good though yeah, like it really think, is like antidote yeah there you go uh li- libertarianism is often like when applied properly yeah. is often an antidote to being an asshole well, yeah. <laughs> well, and I was going to say it's an antidote for a lot of the issues we have as a country right mm-hmm. now. Like, I mean, if we embraced more volunteerism and stuff like that, mm-hmm. um, the, the, the country could be a much more peaceful place. Yeah. Well, I, that's certainly a huge part of this uh, partisan divide. Um, in this country is that uh, whichever side wins gets to impose their will on the other half of the country. And that's why it becomes such a fight every four years when we have these elections, because somebody is going to get screwed. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's going to control the other half of the country. Mm -hmm. And neither of these groups are small government anymore. Even the Republicans, like they can make that claim all day long, but the truth doesn't bear that out. Yeah. And everybody pretty well knows it. It's Mm -hmm. not like a big secret that, oh, they're, you know, Big, they're all big government Republicans. Mm-hmm. Well, and the, the funny thing is that the government, uh, the Republicans tend to be bigger government than the Democrats right now because nobody pays attention when the Republicans spend a bunch of money. Oh, yeah. Um, or impose gun control. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that completely gets brushed under the rug. But, you well, know, I mean, it's one of those four things years like of Trump uh, gave us more gun control than eight years of Obama. Mm-hmm. And that's just a fact. Like, I mean, it's just what it is. Yeah. Well, it's one of those things that only Nixon can go to China. Yeah. You know, like uh, only Trump could have pulled us out of Iraq and Afghanistan. He yeah. didn't. But no. um, I mean, it would take a Republican to do that because uh, a Democrat's going to be called soft and, you know, liberal and pinko yeah. or whatever, you know, like yeah. all the insults go to the Democrat because the Democrats are traditionally anti-war. Yeah. 
they're not really very anti-war now, but they're no. traditionally anti-war, and so uh, they're seen as weak in a lot of ways. And so they can't do that kind of thing for being accused so of being weak. They're more empowered to to drop bombs over Syria. Yeah. On the other hand, um, the uh, the Democrats can do some things that the Republicans can't do, yeah. um, that the Republicans would like to do, but the Democrats can get away with it because it's traditionally a Republican position, and yeah. they would be under scrutiny for it, but the Democrats can can do it. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, so, but the answer, of course, is that we end up again back at this kind of monoparty system, yeah. where or single party system. That's single what we party. agreed on. Right? Yeah, we did. Um, the this kind of single party system where they create this divide to you know keep us fighting with each other instead of looking up at them. But the truth is, they're not really any different. Like yeah. the the mainstream Republicans and the mainstream Democrats want the exact same policies. Yeah, they're they're basically the same party. Mm-hmm. Um, who knows? And eventually, I think that they probably will just be will merge. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think you'll. I think. I mean, we've already seen some of it already. I mm-hmm. think you'll start to see a merge of the two, mm-hmm. and then you're going to end up with a more extreme right wing. Yeah. The uh, the the neoconservatives and the um, the uh, neoconservatives that stayed Democrats. Yeah. Um, are going to come together. The center of the right and the left are going to come together and form one giant party. Whereas the uh, the radicals on either side, the libertarians on the right, and the yeah. um, the progressives or uh, socialists on the left will split off and be their own thing. Yeah. But they won't be able to amount enough power to overcome the the yeah. big central centrist exactly. c- quote unquote centrist party. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, that may be where we're heading. That's a really scary thought. Yeah, yeah. I don't like the sounds of that at all. No. <laughs> I still like the idea that that we need to convince people that they're just splitting their vote, mm-hmm. voting for a Democrat or Republican, and they need to vote Libertarian. Yeah. Like, I mean, I think if we, because I, I do believe like that, that's something that could happen. Mm-hmm. Like, make make them split the vote. Enough with this us splitting the vote. Like, make them split the vote and vote yeah. us in. Well, and, uh, you know, maybe you can just, I don't know if this actually really appeals to people. It does to me, but, yeah. you know, I'm a radical. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, you know, put libertarians in high, o- high level offices because we will devolve governmental power down to the local level. Yeah. As well, best we can. And anyway. I'm convinced more and more going into tax season that we need to, we need to talk more about taxes. And spending. And spending too, mm-hmm. but I mean, taxes are what affects people directly. Yeah, I mean, you that's start something talking, that gets my brother on board. I tell <laughs> you, man, you start talking about. I, I'm saying, man, like I've all I've got shirts all over the place that say taxation is theft, and mm-hmm. I, and they get attention everywhere I go. Yeah, and it's almost always positive. Yeah, <laughs> unless it's a government employee, it's always positive. <laughs> There's a whole lot of right on, brother. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I mean, we that's that's a message we should get behind, and and one that I think could be a winner under the right circumstances. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're right. I think that I really think that the biggest danger is our foreign policy, but I I think you're right. People don't pay attention. It's it's far away. Yeah. yeah. People don't the, pay attention. The stuff to that's going to get people into the voting booth mm-hmm. is is taxation and and, and a, bully, a a campaign that says we're going to do something about it. Yeah. Could be a winner. Yeah. Well, and of course we had the opportunity, great opportunity in 2020 to uh to push about the um the lockdowns. Yeah. That's another, that's another message that I think is a big winner. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just kind of sitting on the sidelines there that nobody's picking up the ball with. Yeah. I don't think it'll matter in 2024. I, I mean, think, hopefully they don't still have us locked down. I mean, well, <laughs> let me tell you something. If we're still dealing with this come 2024, that's a, that's a going to be a winner issue for somebody. Cause yeah. somebody will pick that up. If yeah. that's, if we're well, still there. Well, there's no way they, they have more sense than that. There's no way they can keep people locked down that long. I, I, I tend People, to agree. People's patience is already at its end. There's yeah. no way. Yeah. It, I don't think this stuff will make it to the midterms. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Otherwise, heads will start rolling. And, yeah. And governments recognize that when oh, it's yeah. coming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. These people aren't there because they're dumb. Yeah. So. Well, some of them are. Well, some, plenty of them are. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at the same time, they can see the writing on the wall. So. Um, but just be afraid of your government. There's yeah. good reason to be afraid of your government, and we are giving them every opportunity to uh, get bigger and more oppressive. Well, and don't be afraid to speak out against it because we have to. Like we've got to be willing to stand up and talk and and not not bend the knee. Mm-hmm. 
Hi, I'm tired of that expression. I love that expression. Oh, man. <laughs> use um, it all the time. Don't bend the knee. Usually in the don't do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not usually, I rarely tell people to bend the knee. <laughs> and I, I said, be afraid of your government. But the other half of that is don't be afraid of the narrative. Yeah. Don't let the fear get to you because that is a powerful tool of control. Well, and we've already seen that like 9-11 is a prime example. It's probably mm-hmm. the most recent of our time of pandemic. Well, the, well, not that. Yeah, I guess that's the most recent of our time because yeah. we're still living through that. Yeah. But um, prior to that, 9-11 mm-hmm. is like the because just the fear after 9-11 was was incredible. Yeah. Well, um, there's a there's a theme that runs from that, um, of course, through the Iran stuff and, and everything else is the is the nuclear weapons scare. Yeah. You know, oh, they can nuke you in your jammies. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, so we've got to, we've got to do this now. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. you know, this could happen. We don't want to find out that way, do we? You know, <laughs> all the BS that's gone. Yeah. Um, gone with that. But um, there, I mean, there does seem to be a move. You have, you have government officials openly talking about using counterinsurgency tactics against American citizens in the United States. Yeah. And that pay can, attention. That cannot be ignored. Like, yeah. Yeah. Ignore that at our own peril. Yeah. Um, and I say ours because it's all of us. Like that's not, it's not just for the radicals like me and you, Mike, this is <laughs> bad for everybody. Yeah. Wolverines. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> all right. Well, that's enough for tonight. I suppose um, that, I don't know. I don't have anything else to talk about. I'm just, I'm yeah. trying to think back and like whether the tone of this podcast was what I was hoping for when I was going into it. Um, uh, doesn't so, matter now. It's recorded. We're not doing it again. <laughs> We're not doing it again. <laughs> so yeah. uh, we expect to be back here in a week. Yeah. Um, Even if it has to be a late, we're pulling on a late nighter, so this will pop up for everybody tomorrow. But we're late casting this. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. been a long. I've been going since four thirty this morning. Yeah, it's all Liberty Larry's fault. <laughs> it really is. It's been a long. <laughs> I was been, ready to go hours ago. It was, it's been a long day for me. <laughs> let me say that. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, so in the meantime, uh, you know, follow us on all the places and subscribe on all the places that you can, and like and share and comment and. Um, you can always, uh, send me an email at Michael at the Liberty Mike. Um, happy to hear from you if you have topic suggestions or just information you think that I need. Yeah. Um, happy to, happy to hear it, get it, yeah. have it sent to me, et cetera. Yeah, so Michael at the Liberty Mike and, um, yeah, you can go to the Liberty Mike.com. We're on uh, YouTube at the Liberty Mike. And then of course, iTunes and Podbean also the Liberty Mike. And is that everything? Oh, Facebook. Yeah, we're on Facebook too. Yeah. As long as they'll have us. Yeah, as yeah, um, we need to expand that into some other things soon, yeah. right. probably. Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll be back in a week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short. Live free. Ciao. Later. <laughs>